4 to the 4th power, we really don't need to know for this one anything except what exponents mean. What does the exponent of 4 mean? Yeah? To the power of 4. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, 4 to um, the power of 4 would be to the power of 4. So what does it mean? What does to the 4th power it means to multiply itself by four times. Okay, multiply it four times, whatever it is, and it is this fraction. So there it is, and we need it four times. So let's get a few more of those. And we multiply fractions straight across, so if we multiply this guy by that guy by that guy by that guy, then we'll have four W's. Four W's, which we, but since it's multiplied, we show that as w to the fourth power, and a four to the fourth power, and four to the fourth, 256. My, my hope would be that you kind of play this out in your mind every time, like a little movie, really quick, maybe a GIF. Just plays out when you see a fraction raised to the fourth power, or whatever power you See, yeah, it's going to be a big long line of fractions. We're going to multiply the tops together, the numerators together. We'll have four of those, w to the fourth. We'll multiply four of these together, we'll have four to the fourth. So that uh, we have some level of understanding of what's going on here. Instead of writing it this way, which is correct, but then if I ask you why, hopefully you don't say, because we distribute the thing. That's not why at all. Because four of those fractions we multiply together. Um, so 23. Negative 6 over D. <coughs> negative 2. Okay, so we have a negative exponent. We learned about negative exponents a couple of classes ago. So just as a reminder, like x to the negative 3. What's that the same as? Uh, x to the third. What over x? Oh, yeah. So anything, anything that's raised <coughs> to a negative exponent, we can uh, put it in the denominator with a positive exponent. If it's in the denominator, we can put it in the numerator with a positive exponent. So like I said, anything can be, like, we can apply that to anything that's raised to a negative exponent. Here is a thing that's raised to a negative exponent, that entire fraction. So this fraction, negative 6 over d. Okay, now you raised to a positive 2 power in the denominator of this fraction. So now I can do all the work uh, similar to the previous problem. It's just all in the denominator of this fraction. How that turns out. Uh, we're going to multiply this fraction by itself, right? two of those. So that's a negative fraction times a negative fraction, so we can at least say that it's going to be what, negative or positive? Positive. 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 So we know that. That's helpful to, to know what the sign's going to be. So it's going to be a positive. Well, it's going to be a 6 times a 6. So it's going to be a 36, or a 6 squared. A d times a d. d squared. Okay, well, that have 1 over 36 over d squared. How times it? Times what? Um, like the reciprocal? Yes. Multiply by the reciprocal. One times the reciprocal, which is d squared over 36, which is d squared over 36. We're just multiplying, multiplying by one. That's a, a two, we have two d squared over 36 and so on. There's all these little shortcuts we could do. We, instead of always doing this, right? If I have one over some fraction, I know I can just, the result would be taking that fraction and flipping it over. Instead of having to write multiply by the reciprocal, but I just go ahead and remind you why that is every time. Any questions about that? It's not the only way you can do it, but there are that's, that's one of them. Uh, I chose to deal with that negative exponent first. Maybe you did two, maybe you did three. Any questions? Yeah. Why did you need times it by one after you did one over? So we have we're dividing by a fraction. Mm -hmm. right? And every time we divide by a fraction, I always ask the class, when you divide by a fraction, instead we could 
all multiplied by the reciprocal. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the one, which is the numerator, times the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay. All right. Number 24. Okay, so we've got a similar situation. We've got a thing inside the parentheses raised to a negative, so we can go ahead and deal with that <coughs> negative exponent first, if you like. Okay. Put it as one over, still 7p in parentheses. The only thing that's, that's changed is the exponent is positive. And then put three in four. So we get one over seven cubed times p cubed, right? So each of these is raised to the third. But why? Why is 7 times p to the third? Why can't I just say that 7 to the third times p to the third? Walk me through a little bit more detail as to why that could be, Aiden. So there's three groups of 7s and p's. Yeah. So um, there's three 7s and p's. Yeah, if I were to take, if I were just to apply what I know about exponents to 7p, that would be 7p, 7p, 7p. Three sevens, three p's. We'll just regroup them seven to the third p. Uh, I could have I could have gone a different way with it. I could have said uh, the same way that seven times p to the third is the same as seven third seven to the third p to the third. That works with negative exponents too, with less of an obvious reason why that is. <coughs> but I could make it seven to the negative three times p to the negative three. Now they both have negative exponents, so it becomes 1 over 7 to the third, as we understand negative exponents. Now we have 1 over 7 to the third times p to the 1 over p to the third. We multiply 1 times 1 to get 1. 7 to the third times p to the third, we get the denominator. And then we can write 7 to the third, which is 343? Mm -hmm. I think it was 343, wasn't it? 7 times 7 equals 49 times 3 times 7. Times seven. Oh yeah, it's time for three. Three forty three, yeah. Three forty three P to the third. Any questions at all? Let me just give you a little bit of a uh, a warm up, a little bit more of a warm up to the review. And especially with these negative exponents, it was a little bit of a challenge for us yesterday. So let's see if We've grown a little bit and improved. Let's say we have 5x to the negative 2 times y to the third over z to the negative 5. We can rewrite that with positive exponents. Not writing it down, definitely going to call on you to explain it to the rest of us. OK, I'll start this. Uh, I've seen at least two people doing this exact thing. Just taking x to the negative 2, I know that's 1 over x squared. So we just turn x to the negative 2 over one over, into 1 over x squared. 5 times, where it was times x to the negative 2, it's times 1 over x squared, because that's what x to the negative 2 is. Times y to the third, all over, let's do the same thing to this, this guy here, we have 1 over z to the fifth. This is kind of messy, but uh, I have this 5 here. Multiply by 1 over x squared, maybe I can multiply those together to make that a little more clear what that would exactly look like. Let's turn these guys into fractions as well. Just put them over 1. So how would I multiply these three fractions together in the numerator? Yes? Uh, you would multiply it by the reciprocal for x. Just up here. Wow. Just to multiply these fractions together, how would I multiply fractions together? Right, just straight across, so 5 times 1 times y cubed, 5y cubed, over 1 times x squared times 1, that's x squared, okay, so that's the numerator of this big old fraction here, over 1 over z squared, this is looking better, because now at least it's a fraction divided by another fraction, now what do we do? So we'll multiply this uh, numerator, 5y cubed, over x squared, times the reciprocal of the denominator. The denominator is uh, 1 over z squared, so the reciprocal is z squared over 1. And then multiply straight across. 5y cubed, z squared, over 
I'm sorry, is he, I, I lost one of the, I this wrong, to the fifth, to the fifth. It's like way uh, too it complicated. It was simple as if it made sense. No. Yeah. 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 All right, so x to the negative 2. What do we know about x to the negative 2? If I just put a big old x to the negative 2 up on the screen, we know about negative exponents. What is x to the negative 2? X to the 2. 1 over x squared. So that's all I did. I took x to the negative 2, rewrote it as 1 over x squared. Because okay. that, just that guy right there, just that term, is the same as 1 over x squared. So I wrote it that way I, before I wrote this, these ones here. So what I had then was 5 times 1 over x squared times y cubed. Right? So they're all separate terms. In order to get them to, to multiply together, just recognize that this is a fraction. 5 over 1, this is a fraction. y cubed over 1. And now I multiply all three fractions together by multiplying straight across. 5 times 1 times y cubed, which is 5y cubed. And then the denominator is 1 times x squared times 1. That's x squared. So now we found that the, the numerator is this fraction 5y cubed over x squared. The denominator was a, a guy with a negative exponent as well. So 1 over z to the fifth. Just write what we know is z to the negative 5 meaning. 1 over z to the fifth. Then I had a fraction divided by a fraction multiplied by the reciprocal. 5y cubed times z to the fifth. There's our numerator. x squared times 1. x squared. Write this down because I'm kind of having trouble following what you said. sorts of different ways to approach these problems. I could have left it as just 5 and that's all this stuff. Up. 5 times 1 over x squared times y cubed. It's just that what I chose to do at that point was to, to multiply all these guys together. And to do that, just to help everybody see what that means exactly, I just showed everybody, well, those are fractions. They're just over 1. So like the, this would be multiplied by 1 and I could multiply by y cubed. If I would have lined up with one fraction, I kind of have to see it that way. But I don't even have to multiply those together. Like what Oliver's saying is, before we even worry about all that, we could just go like this. Multiply this by the reciprocal of this. Like the step that we took here, just do that here. That would work as well. That would be 5 times 1 over x squared times y cubed times 1, or sorry, not 1 over z to the fifth, but y cubed times and now we could do that. Which I don't have to write it over one, but I definitely need to understand that that's the fraction that all of these are. And if we multiply all those four together, we'll get this uh, straight away. That's another way to go. Does that make sense? Richard? So uh, back to if it was five over one and then y over one. Like this? Yeah, and if um, if the numerator for x wasn't 1, if it was 2, then would it be 5 times 2 equals 10? So that would be like a 10y cubed in that case. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Bridget? And on the bottom, if, say... I don't know if one of those were different. If like, like this is a two or something? Yeah, if that was a two, would it just be um two x squared? It would, yeah. Okay. Uh, and oh I wanted to point this out. I mean look at how what we started with and look at the final answer. Because there it seemed like not 
quick and fast way to get from here to there. Kind of follows the, what we know about negative square roots. Okay, I don't want to say switch because it's not like they're needing to switch, but this x to the negative 2 is 1 over x squared, and so it would, seems to make sense that it would move to the denominator, and this z to the negative 5 is in the denominator and is a negative exponent, so it would make sense that it would come up into the numerator and have a positive exponent. And as long as everything in the numerator and denominator are multiplied, like there's not adding or subtracting, then you can do that. You can just take the negative exponent term, just pop it down in the denominator, you can take the denominator that has a negative exponent and move it up to the numerator. Or do that and just do it step by step. You want to do the same thing? All right, so let's get out a piece of paper. The one that you just wrote on, make sure to hold on to those for notes later. We've got a blank piece of paper right now. Okay, so first one, I think. Not too bad. Because if we were to. I can hear you even though I'm looking this direction. Assume that when I'm talking, I'm giving you a little bit of a grace period. Uh, if we were to do this, right, take something to the fourth power, take this thing to the fourth power, we would see four of these entire copies of all of this. So we'd see a 3x squared y cubed four times. So in the end, we multiplied everything together, collected everything into the same, uh, into convenient groups. How many threes would we multiply together? Four of them. And how many x's would we be multiplying together? Yeah. Those, because we have an x squared, and again an x squared, then an x squared, and then a fourth x squared, right? Four of those, two a piece, that's eight. eight. x to the eighth. And how many y's? Four. Four of those guys. Three, three, no, no, three, 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 and three. Four yeah. five. Oh, that's it? Um, okay, well, we could go uh, what, 81? Yeah. yeah. That's what we can. Of course you can. So does anybody want to suggest something or you just want me to do it? Aiden? You can do it. Three times all of that would just be uh, 12, and then three is either there. Uh, three groups. So the, did you actually write it all out? Yes. Okay, that's great. So you, you wrote it out three times, you multiply them all together, you got a four times a four times a four then, right? Which was 64. Yeah. And then an x to the negative two times x to the negative two times x to the negative two, what that come out to be? X to the negative six. X to the negative six. Y squared, Y squared, Y squared, what would that be? Uh, six. six of those guys. All over. Uh, Z to the 15. Z to the 15, because the denominator would appear three different times. Five Z's each, 15 total. Anything else to do, Grayson? Um, so you need to make the X to the negative six power a mm -hmm. positive. Yeah. So that just have a one over it and cancel out like the negative. You just make it possible. So 64, 1 over x to the 6? Yep. Minus 6 over z to the 15. Did you sleep like that? No, you continue. Continue, OK. So what, what does continuing look like? Um, 64 times y to the 6th power. And y to the 6th power. Over x to the 6th power. Times z to the 15th power. Uh-huh. No, not there. No. Oh. Oh, okay, so 64, y to the 6th power over x to the 6th power over z to the 5th power? To the 15th power. Oh, okay, not 15th power, 15th power. So you have to do the reciprocal. Reciprocal of that is 1 over that. So we then, 64 y to the 6th over x to the 6th, right? Three Multiplied one. by 1 over z to the 15th, which then eventually looks like that, right? Uh, when we multiply by the reciprocal of this, the reciprocal of this, this
this is z to the 15th, so reciprocal of z to the 15th is 1 over z to the 15th. So that's z to the 15th is actually why I'm counting. Okay. Um, what I was doing was just getting equations from the um, I was simplifying what was in the parentheses, okay. and then I was going to do all of that um, in three groups, but I didn't. I only got as far as you simplified that. Okay. Let's get another page then. And actually, I think I did that. So you did it this way. Maybe, is this what you're saying? 4 times 1 over x squared, y squared, mm -hmm. over z to the fifth. All of that still inside the parentheses. So that comes to be 4y squared over x squared over z to the fifth. Okay, to the third. And then if we take this and multiply with the reciprocal of z to the fifth, the recipro reciprocal of z to the fifth is 1 over z to the fifth. So trying to speed this along a little bit, we get 4y squared over x squared times z to the fifth. And all that's raised to the third still. So Molly dealt with the negative exponent before anything else. We raise it to the third, and it's a lot like what uh, Aiden walked us through at the beginning of, of his approach. 4 to the third is 64. y squared to the third is y to the sixth. x squared to the third, x to the sixth. z to the fifth to the third is z to the fifteenth. So yeah, that's a good way to go. I think that's what I would have done. But after a lot of experience, I tend to just say, here's x to the negative 2. I know I can just move it down into the denominator. Right? That's one, one smooth move. But if you do it like this, it's great. I mean, it takes a little bit longer, but even if you practice that, it won't take all that long, really. Either way, you can simplify the inside and then take it to the third power. Okay, so as for our something new today, we're going to learn about different kinds of roots. I was thinking we're going to make it to, to, to exponents that are fractions, but I don't think we're going to do it today. So let's start with me asking you, what do you think um, this is? What do you think that 3 means? It's three. the... Oh, not square root, but it's like the cube root. It is the cube root. What does the cube root of 8 mean? Uh, okay. Oh, the square root of 8 times itself 3 times. The square root of 8 times itself 3 times. Might be. I don't no. know. Does 8 have a nice square root? Uh -uh. No. So, I mean, why wouldn't it be that? We're just kind of taking guesses right now, but since. We're just learning about it. Probably my my answer that I picked is going to be a nice number, Molly. What times itself three times equals eight? There it is. What you said? What oh. times itself, not two times, but three times, is going to equal eight, right? Two. Two. Two times two times two is eight. So two is the cubed root of eight. Oh, that's easy. That was easy. Wait, so what? So what? What's that? Let me put, let me, let me write why that is, right? Because, because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. 2 times 2 is 4. Oh, so our, is yeah. what we're doing, say, if you had, like, the number 64, and then you had, well, just, like, a random number, and then you had the 3, would you just try finding, um, what number you can multiply three times itself to get that number. That's it. Okay. So the square root is what number do I multiply just by itself, just two of them. The cube root is I need to multiply three of them. So... 27. What's that now? 27. Three. Okay, so an example, the cube root of 27, is it three? Because... 3 times 3 is 9, and then times another 3 is 27. Yes, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. How about this? Of, uh, oh, um, 
Can we just do... No. It's a five. Is it five? Why is it five? Or is it just a guess? Five, five, five times five, five equals five 25. Five. Yeah, it's five. five. I just did it on the calculator. What did you do in the calculator, Grace? I did five times five times five times five. So the four there tells us there should be four or fives to multiply together. To get 625, it worked out. So I remembered the fifth power, or the fourth power of five correctly. Wait, how did we find that, though? Did we just, like, guess? It was a little bit of guessing, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that what we do in this, then? We're going to, uh, yeah, to start with, it's just a little bit of guessing, but it's not going to get too crazy. Like, that 5 is not very big. Even if you started at 2, you're like, okay, I know I'm supposed to multiply it 4 times. Two, three, that work, 3, 4, you only had to do up to 5. Right. right. If you were just going down the line. Mm -hmm. well, it's not like we're going to get to 16 is the answer. Like, the fourth root of something is 16. Some giant number. Uh... But estimation is a really, really handy skill to have. Knowing what you know now about these different roots, resist the urge to start packing up and making class go longer because you're making noise. OK? Uh, let's start with the, the fourth root of 25. How big do you think that is? Do you think that is A, B, C, D, E, F? I think it's, oh, you can't say two. A. I think it's A. Somebody said B. Said C. Okay, I hear some B's, some C's. Let's think about B and C. What is, B is less than 2, C is more than 2, so let's just talk about 2. Um, yeah. 2 times 2. But you can't do 2 because that would just be even limit. Well, okay, so what? let's check it by saying what's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? An even number. This is odd. But what is it? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 equals 4 times 2 It's 16. 16. Uh, let's go to 3. What's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? 3 times 3, 27. 27. It's already passed. No. It's even bigger than 27. Yeah. Oh. It's 3. Th three. three. No, but I mean it's bigger than That's 25. 27 uh, times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Three, these other 3 times 3 is 9. What's 9 times 9? 81. 1. So 81. So 2 is too small because it only gives you 16 if you take it to the fourth. 3 is too big, right? This, so this gives you 16 if you take it to the fourth. This gives you 81 if you take it to the fourth. We want to get 25. So would you believe it's a little bit bigger than 2? Yeah. Yes. Because so 25 is a little bit past 16. We don't want to get too close to 3 because we don't want our number to be that close to 81. So this must be what? To go with what? C. C. About, what do you think about the third root of 65? What do you think that is? Uh, six E. Do you think it's E? you think it's a little bit bigger than 4? That's got to be D. You think it's D, D or D? One of the two. Well, E four is a little bit four. bigger than 4, and, oh. and D is a little bit smaller than 4. So let's look at 4. What's 4 times 4 times 4? What's 16 times 4? 16 times 4. 256. It ain't 4. Is this the third root? Oh, third. 64. 64. So, oh, so it has to be D. It has to be D? Yeah. No, e, D, D. It has to be E. Which is it? Well, why would it be 16? Is E 4 or is it more than 4? So 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Oh, wait, yeah, it'd have to yeah, be so E. It's it's, so D is less than E. So wait, is E 4? E must be in. E is just barely past 4. Like, oh, okay. Because oh. I can't see the line, so. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's because right because you think it's E? Is yeah. Because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, but we want the third root of 65. It's just. just tiny bit bigger, so we want a number that's a tiny bit bigger than 4. Yeah? Okay. E. Yeah. The bell ring. The bell ring. All right. Goodbye. Wait, they got the homework is. Hold on. Homework is. Yeah, I'll get the text. Have a fun day. 6.3. No. Oh, Four. And 13 through 15. Oh, okay. Four inside. 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 Four